I'd like to talk to you about two starter problems on a gardener <clears throat> and approaches that will get you home when your starter's giving you problems. Now I'm only looking at two uh, issues here, not, not a complete failure of a starter. And I have to preface this as I should have done with all my videos by saying that I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert on gardener engines or on starters. There's people out there who are, know far, far more about it than I do and have far more experience than I do. I'm only giving you my take and my um, hard-earned experience. <clears throat> These two instances that I'm talking about, I have personally experienced myself and um, my neck has been saved by them. Okay, I'd like to talk about two instances. First of all, you turn the key to start your engine and all you get is a, a thump. You just get a thump sound. You might release the key, turn it again, and the starter will engage and away you go. But this becomes more and more frequent, so you get to the stage whereby you turn the key and the starter just goes, and it doesn't matter how many times you turn it, um, it won't engage. The other instance is where you turn the key and you get this horrible metallic rattling sound where the pinion on the starter has gone in, has tried to engage with the teeth on the starter ring, but has failed. And it's a horrible, horrible sound. And you certainly don't want to um, repeat it because you'll very soon screw up your pinion here. So I'm gonna look at these two scenarios. So let's go back to the first one, which is probably the simplest. You turn the key in the <coughs> on your engine and all you get is a now, what's happening here is that the auxiliary winding here in the starter is just not strong enough to bring the whole rotor forward. Um, <clears throat> I explained this in a previous video where I looked at starters in general. So somehow or other, by virtue of a short circuit, an open circuit on the auxiliary winding, the rotor is just not coming forward strongly enough. It's supposed to come forward and rotate slowly and engage in the in the starter ring teeth and once it's engaged in the starter ring teeth the full current comes on and the, your engine will start okay what can we do and this has happened to me personally it's a particular problem on a boat because you can be tied up on a key somewhere in the middle of nowhere and you just have no help available if you're in a lorry or a bus you can perhaps get a tow or you can run the vehicle down a hill or something and you can get it started that way if, you're, if it's a generator you're working with or a pump, again, you can be in the middle of nowhere and there's just no way around the problem, but you need to start for some reason or other. Okay, what you do is, there's just two small screws here at the back and you take off the cover. Now, you will, of course, take the battery terminals off before you do that. So, I'm going to put my battery terminals back on again now. So I've done that. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a starter here that's displaying this problem. We just have to pretend that this starter is faulty. What you do then is you go to your kitchen or your galley and you get this. It's a wooden spoon. It's the same wooden spoon that you use for stirring your porridge or disciplining your grandchildren or whatever it happens to be. If you look carefully on the end of the armature here, you'll see a, a, a stainless steel uh, ring or disc on there. You then position your, <coughs> your wooden spoon on there and you push the whole armature forward until it engages in the ring teeth. You then hit your button, bang. Your starter will engage and your engine will start. Okay, I'm going to show you that now in practice. Put the wooden spoon there against the ring. We pretend this is your key. Push the whole rotor forward. It takes a fair wee bit of a push. Push it all the way forward. Hit the button. And she runs. I hope you've got that. Just do it again. 
I find it's better to put the, uh, it could be any piece of wood, of course. I was only joking about the wooden spoon. Wooden spoon is actually very good for the job. And of course, a plastic one will do every bit as well. You don't use a conductor. You definitely do not use an electrical conductor. And they use a piece of, small piece of wood or a piece of plastic or something. Just show you that again. Oh, I think it's better to put the wooden spoon in here on this side because the rotor's ro rotating that way than this way. So it's better in this side. So put in your wooden spoon, push the rotor forward, not the whole way forward, but three quarter forward or so. Hit the button and she starts. So simple. You go on to the next scenario. Um, it's a known fact that gardener engines, whenever they stop, they stop in the same point in the cycle every time. And what happens is the ring gear on the flywheel, starter ring gear, becomes worn. Sometimes it can be really quite significantly worn. So we'll, we'll take a look at that now. Let's take a look at a ring gear and I'll show you the wear on it. You can see here on this starter ring that the teeth are only worn there where the starter pinion has engaged. Otherwise, they're, they're not too bad at all. So that illustrates the issue. Well, you'll have seen there that the teeth are worn along just a short stretch of the starter ring gear. So if you can rotate the engine uh, and move the point of contact with the pinion away from those worn, worn teeth, your engine will start fine, no problem. Um, your challenge is how do you rotate the engine? That's the problem. Um, in a road vehicle, uh, again, you can just run the engine. You can run, get a tow or run it down the hill or something, and the engine will start anyway. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, the problem is getting access to the teeth on the flywheel. That's the problem. Um, what you can do is you can go to the front pulley and get a big spanner or get some sort of a lever on there and rotate the engine. You don't have to rotate it very much. Just rotate it about 30 degrees or so, and that's it. The engine will, will start fine. In fact, there are I, we have fishermen customers out there who now use this approach all the time, and they've been using it for months, and it, it's, it's fine. It, the, the engine starts no problem. Um, it's not a long-term solution. I'm not suggesting anything I'm saying here is a long-term solution. It's only a get-me-home get uh, scenario. So rotating the engine is your challenge. You can... If you're lucky, you've got a big socket, you can put it on the front pulley there and rotate the engine um, sufficiently to do the job. You can put a Stilson spanner on the auxiliary shaft and turn the whole engine there. Turn It turns easy enough, as you can see. Now, do not put a Stilson spanner on here. Um, the reason for that is you'll be putting too much tension on the timing chain. Uh, that auxiliary shaft is connected to a big gear, which would in effect be driving a small gear, and that demands a lot of torque. So don't do that. On the auxiliary, on the auxiliary shaft, you've got a small gear driving also a relatively small gear, so that's not too bad. Particularly if you've got de decompression levers, uh, that'll work okay. The essence is really you've got somehow or other to rotate the engine. If you've got a pulley on there on the front, you can perhaps get um, a good pair of ice grips or something on it, and you can turn it that way. Now, very often there's an inspection plate here at the top of the bell housing. The <clears throat> flywheel itself is in here. Um, and sometimes you can get a screwdriver in here and engage it on the teeth of the starter ring and just prise the engine over. It's particularly easy to do this if you've got decompression levers. Um, but even without decompression levers, it is possible. It's tedious, but you can do it. Remember, again, I repeat, this is only a get-me-home solution where your back's against the wall and you don't have any other options. You'll have seen there that there's only a short section of the ring gear that's actually worn. So if you can somehow manage to move the flywheel away from that, then the starter pinion will be engaging on uh, a nice, clean, uh, proper uh, row of teeth. Um, that's what it boils down to. As long as you can rotate the flywheel somewhere or other, the, pinion will, the starter pinion will engage and your engine will start no problem. 
It's only a get me home solution. It's not a long term solution. Although I do know fishermen out there who do this all the time. Before they go to start their engine at all, they simply rotate the engine and uh, they, they don't have any issues with that. And they'll get away with it for months. Um, it's particularly easy if you've got um, a Gardner gearbox. We'll have a wee look at that now. So here we've got a classical 2UC uh, Gardner gearbox. It's a mechanical gearbox. So if you can get anything onto this flange here at all, a nail bar, a big screwdriver or something, you can rotate the engine that way. It's easy enough done. Uh, the gearbox has to be in gear, of course. The funny thing is that if you've got a Gardner gearbox uh, on a boat, a marine, a Gardner marine gearbox, you can actually tow start them. It has been done. If you put the gearbox ahead and tow the boat, the propeller has been rotated by the motion of the water past the blades. It'll rotate the whole engine and the engine will start. Incredible. You can't do that with a modern hydraulic gearbox. So that's it. That's my 20 cents. Um, I confess that the second scenario is a lot more difficult to overcome than the first one. And even the first one, if you don't have access into the starter, uh, the rear of the starter, well, I don't know how to address that. Um, but certainly I have found that both those approaches um, have got me home on a number of occasions. Thanks a lot for joining me.